These are supposed to be bolts. Today on the 900 series, Ben stopped by. Does it smell like Massachusetts rust? Whoa, hey. I'm Tony Mazzagatti, owner of 900 Series Motorsports. Porsche says that 70% of all Porsches ever made are still on the road today. Our mission is to keep it that way. This is the 900 Series. Hey, Tony, got a minute? What are you doing? I'm, I'm going to change the starter motor in this thing. Well, you know what you're doing. Anyway, got another one of those nice phone calls. A gentleman named Scott picked up an 87 uh, Targa. He somehow knows it had a limited time in water. All cars get water, we just don't know how much. Time in water. He said it may have been in Massachusetts. Obviously, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll get it up on a rack and, and take a look and see what, if any, water damage was done to any components or the body. Generally speaking, the bodies are okay in those cars because they're all galvanized metal when they're made at the factory. He said it sounds good, but until you get it up in the air, you know, it's like when you smell a baby's diaper. Well, you know? we'll since it's a Massachusetts car, we'll have you smell it. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Does it smell like Massachusetts for us? Heard a lot of good things about the shop, so I stopped by and talked to Ramon after I had purchased it, but before I actually received the car. And uh, after talking with him, I felt real comfortable. I like the guys here. I like to being able to see everything they're doing and uh, decided as soon as I got my car, I was gonna bring it by to them and have them check it out. Any other causes of concerns? The uh, windows work, gauges all work. Yep, I bought the car off of uh, an internet auction site. I knew it had some problems. I knew I needed some repairs, but they wanted me to actually drive it a little bit and see if there were any other issues before I brought it to them. Let's let's just take a quick look through. I haven't seen the car under here myself. We've got the engine out. We can see a lot of the external uh, components that need to be replaced, refinished, break into the engine, pull the heads off, and work on the head studs. After we do that, we're gonna drop the entire exhaust system disassemble the engine. This car is also going to need the brakes run through completely because the three of the four wheels on the car barely rotate. One of the CV joints is split open. Another one is slinging grease in, under the car. So axles have to come out and, and redo the CV joints and boots. We'll do our best. Appreciate it. Appreciate okay, you. we'll Thanks, talk Tony. to you. Some of the stuff is a little worse than I expected and some is a lot better. I know it's going to be something that we can work through and um, excited to see the progress. So we got this car in last night. And I pulled the engine on it so I could start on it this morning. I've got it on the stand now. And it came in, he uh, knows he has some broken uh, cylinder head studs. And it looks uh, like it's got a lot more problems than that. If you notice all the rust, I've been trying to coat things. And so far, everything I've taken off, I've almost had to cut or drill to get it off. So I'm gonna start taking some sheet metal off so I can expose this stuff. If I can get it to. As you can see, there's a lot of rust on the engine, so I have to cut these fasteners off because they don't come off like you would ordinarily, and soaking them doesn't work. So I'm going to cut them off, try not to destroy any parts while I do that. The uh, more time it takes, the more it adds to the cost, and that's what's difficult to describe to the customer. So I have to remove uh, the exhaust system, and then all the sheet metal that you see around the engine here has got to be removed. And you can see what I'm going to be up against if you notice right in here. These are supposed to be bolts, but you can't even identify them. They're so rusty, so that's going to be time consuming. I'm going to have to cut those out. It's all repairable. Everything can be replaced, can be fixed, but it just takes a lot longer when they're in this condition. I'm going to try cutting the heads of these off. Ordinarily, you just put a wrench on, pull off, you just keep going, and you can have this engine stripped down in no time. But when you got to deal with this, this is what people have to understand. It takes time. Time and patience. And a new cutting wheel. Coming up after the break. So I have a 87 911. I think I want a new exhaust system, uh, but nothing too loud. I want a little more horsepower. As part of our early promotion for the TV show, we partnered with Pelican Parts and uh, had a contest won by Ben in Ohio. So Ben stopped by and we're gonna talk about some potential upgrades. So I have a 87 911, just looking to do a few things to it. 
I'm always concerned about the noise, mm -hmm. but I do want a different exhaust system. Originally, I had a B&B, &B and it had the dual outs, mm -hmm. and I liked that look. It just was too loud for me. So I'm looking to do something. I don't know if I get fake exhaust on the right side or a real one, because I, I might do DE events. I'm not sure. I always like the performance, but I'm always concerned about yep. the sound. Because you drive the car on the street. I do. I, I drive to work. This is a pretty common issue that we hear sometimes from, from uh, Porsche owners. It's always difficult to balance the noise of an exhaust system because it's different for a street car and a track car. We'll talk about some of the fab speed uh, systems that we have, and he can judge whether the sound is what he's really looking for for his street car. Well, there, there are ways you can still have a true two outlet on it okay. and, and still be quiet enough for the street and, and for your family to, to ride in it, but still have the performance that you want in case you do a, a DE event. When we talk about a DE event, what we're talking about is driver education. The value of that is that a Porsche handles a little bit differently than most cars that people are used to because there are mid-engine cars, rear-engine cars, and front-engine cars, and they all handle just a little bit differently. There are things that you can do to the car, and you can do it in phases also, so you don't okay. spend a lot of money on it, that if you do go to a DE event, and as you get more and more proficient on the track or in an autocross or something like that, that you can upgrade the suspension, the, the brakes, the, uh, even a seat. It's, it's very important to, to have a, a good seat to be yeah. in so that you're not sloshing okay. around in the, in the car. And you can take the seat out you know, after an event and put your stock seat back okay. in there. So the two most important things that we talk about in performance driving is the seat and tires. The seat is very important so that you have control of the car and you're not sloshing around. And the tires, of course, are your main contact with the road. So it's very important to transfer your control to the car to the road. And as you get more experience driving the car, you'll be able to make those adjustments. And again, people in the Porsche Club or at those events, they'll be able to give you plenty of influence on, uh, okay. on how to make adjustments and adjust to your driving style and how you're progressing. One of the real advantages of going to these DE events is to learn so much from all the other Porsche owners that are out there that, are, that probably have so much more experience. And there are a lot of fine points that they can help you with to make you as a driver and your car much more competitive, safer, and more controllable. What we'll do now is I'll turn you over to Ramon and uh, he, he and, and you can get on the Pelican Parts website okay. and look at some of the possibilities, some of the different variations of things that you can put in the car. So it was great visiting with Ben. Of course, the one thing that we were emphasizing is track time. The more track time you have, the much better driver you're going to be. I have a 1987 911. I think I want a new exhaust system, uh, but nothing too loud, but I want a little more horsepower. I'll talk you into loud if you want. <laughs> I don't want loud. Okay. What website you've been looking at? Pelican Parts. Pelican uh, Parts. Just, just get an idea for, for different things that I could do. Come on around. Okay. Uh, this doesn't twist well. We can look at Pelican's website, which is very informative. Let's look at some fab speed exhaust systems. Now, were you looking at doing just the exhaust silencer or muffler or the whole heat exchanges all the way back or you want to look at price for well i was talking to tony and he said i might only have to do the muffler okay at yeah. one point my car had a two out so i'm looking to get back into that look so you want the two out of the center or two out of the sides do you have uh, cutouts uh, on the sides okay so you've got the cutouts on the side muffler sport polished stainless steel now this will give it a nice tone and a nice look okay and, and as you can see it's available, only weighs 27 pounds, and they got a two-year warranty on it for you. That's a nice one. What color is the car? Guards red. That'll be a nice addition. I already have the chrome boots so that'll we'll pair up nicely. Sounds good. When did 18-inch wheels become standard equipment on a 911? Hi right, Scott, you can see we've got your engine out, we started reassembly, uh, got a little roadblock, but the good news, bad news is what he recommends and what it costs, so. As you see, I've got the piston cylinders, rings, and all that all together. My next stage that I have to do is I, I'm going to put the camshaft in, so I'm checking it all out, and on the camshafts, 
you can see how that has got a lot of wear in it. Yes. And it's actually worn down. Mm -hmm. This one is, isn't as bad, but if you notice the pitting it's got right here, it's a little bit, yeah, see it looks like little, uh, little holes worn. That's where the hardness is, is wearing off. And eventually that'll just get worse. So what causes all the wear? A lot of miles, but this one right here doesn't look like this, this engine, I said it had been on water, didn't look like it had the best of care the whole time. The engine was pretty dirty on the inside. And now's the time to talk to you about going to 964 camshafts. If you got to get cams anyway, we'll see what the difference is in price in it because there's a big difference in horsepower. But that's what it kind of gets you up to date to where we are now. I can't go any further until I get camshafts. Could you I guys say, keep this part away so my wife doesn't see this? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, you know, I had a budget with her as well, so yeah. I'm gonna add a little extra, a little horsepower. So our option yeah. is send it to machine shop, have that remachined to the proper profiles, uh, profiles right. or go with an upgraded camshaft, which will be higher performance, yep. higher horsepower. Yeah. And still really streetable. It's not like you're gonna to go to this horsepower and get a car that's you know is gonna die every time you go to the stoplight or shake or rattle right. You won't even notice the difference in the running other than when you're driving it. Okay, after talking with him a little bit, we decided to go with an upgraded 964 camshaft. Have to spend a little bit more money, but it's gonna be done right, so can't wait to get the car back. This is uh, certainly the other end of the spectrum from uh, 911s, early 911s, 912s, 356s. This is a, a really big car. It's a 2010 Panamera 4.8 liter V8 water-cooled car. So I understand this, this car needs, uh, uh, needs you to look at the air cleaner. Yeah. The, and it, what's, it, what's involved with it? The car has uh, 55,000 miles on it, and she doesn't remember changing the air cleaner on it before. And I was trying to explain to the customer that I can't really physically check it without having to remove the front bumper. The intake system leads us to a box here uh, where the air box would sit, but it's uh, being blocked off by the front bumper. So you're going to take the bumper off just to get to it. Well, it's quite a job, uh, but it needs to be done. Uh, yeah. You don't have the you know, good clean air going into the engine. If it gets blocked off, and it restricts the airflow, and yeah. you don't get the performance. All right, get to it. Yeah. Talk to you later. So underneath this trim panel, there's going to be screws that hold the bumper on. So I got to get this out the way. Normally, this is just clipped in there. So we got to make sure not to break the tabs. All right, now we got this out the way. We got four Torx head bolts up top. We're going to go ahead and remove those. We got some more Torx bolts in the fender liner here we have to remove. So normally you can do this without having to remove the headlights. But this one is giving me some issues, so I'm going to slide the headlight off. This bubble is going to come forward and out. Then there's going to be all these connectors and hoses that we have to disconnect before it comes off completely. So I like to use a chair. Give me a hand. bumper, put this one aside, no one's going to trip on it, so you can see once the bumper is out the way, you can see where the air box is that holds the air filter. So now that we've got the air box apart, finally see what the condition of the air filter is. Oh, it's just full of mud. So you can see... Uh, how dirty the box is, and being out here in Las Vegas, we get a lot of dust, so a car with 55,000 miles accumulates a lot of that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and grab a new filter for this car and clean out this air box, because it is nasty. That's definitely not going to help the performance of the car. Cricket's not going to like this, but... Watch out, crickets! All right, so we got our clean filter here. Uh, we cleaned out the air box, got the new filter in there. And uh, from here, you just go reverse order and put it back together. This is the first time this vehicle has had the engine air filter changed. With the new air filter in the car, we should experience a much better airflow. The owner should experience better performance and fuel efficiency. Porsche owners take care of their cars, but care for people too. 900 Series Motorsports is proud to support Operation Homefront.
I'm currently in the Navy. After a small storm, we had, we were seeing a lot of shingles coming off the roof. We had our insurance company come out and they pretty much denied helping us with the roof. So I did apply for the critical financial assistance program. I got a phone call stating that I was approved. Maybe sit down in my seat and just take everything in and be like, my family does need this. Operation Homefront supports tens of thousands of military families each year, but there are many more that still need assistance. You can help. Learn how at OperationHomefront.org. I've got the cam timing all done on Scott's engine now, and then uh, once I got it buttoned up, valve covers back on, I went ahead and mounted it on our test stand so that I can uh, pre-run it. Look for any issues, oil leaks, funny noises, pretty much anything, because it's real easy to work on it on the test stand then after it's in the car. So I want if there's a problem, I want to find it now. Anyway, I'll fire it up here and we'll see what happens. Okay, we got ignition. You can hear that's the fuel pump running. No exhaust leaks or anything, that's good. Really happy with how it turned out. No exhaust leaks, no oil leaks, no funny noises. And the throttle response is good. I think Scott's gonna like this. Yeah, I've got the engine running. I'm happy with how it sounds and looks and everything. So now I'm going to remove it from the test stand, mate it up to the transmission, and then I will be mounting it onto a engine cradle for installation. stuff this thing in there, huh? Yeah, finally got it to that point. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, before you stuff it up there, uh, let's point out how this this hangs yeah, it from hangs the from motor chassis. Mounts. Instead of motor mounts, most, most shows they show a V8 and a transmission going in from the top and dropping yeah. it in. Angle like, like that. that and we're the opposite, we're yep. like this. I'm trying to protect yeah. all the paint and whatnot. Yeah. We don't have any paint to protect. Yeah. So we're gonna bring this up and these two points yeah, are gonna bolt right up in yeah, there. Three of the motor mounts, they go right through. This is threaded, so you tighten them down and then you got your rubber mount between the body and, and the hanger. And you got and two on in the, the back. On the front, that's where you or have your trans, trans, transmission mounts. It's all in rubber here. And the bolt goes up through the bottom, has a real big washer on it, and it'll thread right into here. Right these two holes. So basically the engine and transmission, that's what all holds it in. And it just, uh, they're 12 millimeter bolts and it just hangs there on the rubber mounts. What I end up doing on this thing is, uh, jacking up this this engine this is a special jack setup it's on a like a it'll tilt and as i bring it up it's going to look like it wants to fall off but what it does it goes so far and stops so it gets the transmission up at an angle the front mounts will hit here and as i put more pressure on the jack it'll just automatically lever it back up and it just makes it easier to put everything in so what we're going to do with this is you you get the engine up to a certain level then we're actually going to drop the car down onto the engine rather than the other way around. All right, I'm about ready to go ahead and get this thing lined up, I think. I'll get a position, I'll lower the body down and start watching, make sure I have all my clearances. Sure, you got the right engine going in the right car. We're, oh, that's a good thing to, that's the yeah, good thing to think of, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the first thing we wanna yeah. check. Yeah, this is it, this is his. All right, sounds good, I'm gonna leave you to it. Hi, right, Tony, thanks. All right, we've got the engine. Mounted up in here, I got a final thing here is the heater hoses, so it'll have heat in the car. And Fab Speed provides these with their new heater boxes and everything to get up there and fit really nice. I got a couple of bolts to check here, make sure everything's right. I'm sure they're okay. I always like to double check them. I don't want anything falling out. All right, I've got the engine in the car now, all mounted up. I'll uh, do a quick check over to make sure that uh, everything's the way it should be. And then we'll uh, let it down on the ground, fire it up, and take it for a test drive. Looks like everything's good, ready to go here. Throttle's free, bolt's tight. Okay, let's see what happens, see if it fires up. Well, that's good. Yeah. Run really
really smooth. It is. So it's a, well, that's, that's well. the advantage of having it on that test stand first, yeah. too, is you, you know, you can get a lot of out, but you never know until you hook it up, because now I'm using the car's wiring harness, the car's fuel pump, and fueling where on the, yeah. you know, test stand, it's a standalone system, but... Uh, Are you going to get to test drive it, or uh, can I do it? That's one of the advantages of being the boss. When it comes time to do a test drive in a really nice car, that's where I take over. Makes any funny noises, don't come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's a shop down the street. I'll take it yeah. down there. Don't <laughs>Now this engine that Gary just did is fantastic. It's really smooth. Yeah, I rarely want to bring these things back and give them to the owner. I would like to keep them all myself. One of these days, instead of retiring, I'll just uh, not return the car and disappear. So I got a phone call uh, yesterday stating that the car is ready to be picked up. Pretty excited, it's been a while without it, and the sun is shining here in Vegas, so it's time to hop in that sucker and take the top off and go cruising. Pretty excited. Well, there you go. Enjoy, it's been a great project. Uh, I think you're gonna like the way it runs. Thanks, Tony, can't wait. All right, let's 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 hear it go. Good.